Okay, video one for chapter five goes with section 5.1, and we're gonna talk about rates, ratios, and unit rates. So the first target says I can find and use rates and ratios with labels and units. So making sure to label or put units on everything we write down. And I can divide to find a unit rate. And we'll talk about what that is. And compare or pick the best option. So some of this will spill over into our next video as well. There's a lot in section 5.1. Okay, first vocab, ratio. Comparison of two values using division. So I'm going to start writing our ratios like fractions. Write like fractions. And if we write them like fractions, then we'll be able to see that that does actually mean division. So here's an example. A ratio could be the ratio of cats to dogs, right? If I have 12 cats to 15 dogs, I could write that as 12 cats to 15 dogs like that. And I could simplify, right? What goes into 12 and into 15? I could divide both of those by three. So 12 divided by three and 15 divided by three. And now I have the simplified ratio, four cats to five dogs, okay? So we should always, all of our ratios should always be simplified. If possible, we want our ratios to be simplified. If there's a quiz question that says, give the ratio, it needs to be the simplified ratio. Okay, a rate, a ratio, so comparing two quantities that have different units. Different units, and those units could be anything, right? Here's some examples of rates, 100 miles in two hours, and I could stack those up, 100 miles in two hours, that's a rate, or $36 in three hours or $16 for four sandwiches. So whenever we write our rates, we want to have everything labeled, right? Miles, hours, dollars, sandwiches, everything has a label when we set up our rates, okay? The word per means for each, per person, right? For each person. And per, when we say it or when we see it, is telling us to divide. Okay, so examples of using per, miles per hour, or we also have miles per gallon is another one that we see a lot. Dollars per hour, or it could be like dollars per person is one we see, dollars per person. And I have here that we often show that slash, or sorry, show per, with a slash like this. So when you see the slash, you're gonna say per. Um, or maybe you have like slices of pizza per person. And we might say per, we might write per, or use the slash, okay? That's gonna come up a lot in this chapter. And we saw this a little bit in chapter three as well with our rates, right? We were using the word per in our rates, in our equations in chapter three. Unit is just a label on your answer. Some different examples of units. You might have feet. You might have degrees. Hours. Maybe you're counting butterflies. Any kind of label. Apples. Um, minutes. Inches. Anything that you're using to count or measure, right? Those are the labels you put on your work and your answer. Unit rate is when we actually divide your rate and get a denominator of one. And the reason we do this is that we want to find out for each person or for each gallon or for each hour or for each sandwich, how much is it? So when we actually divide, we get a unit rate. This is a big one. Put a star by this one. 
a lot of this section and a lot of this whole chapter is all about finding the unit rate, okay? And that's for one thing or for each thing. So let's do these examples, right? These are the same we had up here for our rates. If I actually stack those rates up, 100 miles in two hours, and I actually divide 100 divided by two, I get 50 miles per hour. That's a unit rate. It's 50 miles for one hour. 36 divided by three, right? I'm gonna do this one up here. $36 divided by three hours. Let's say you earn $36 in three hours. Well, divide that and that comes out to $12 per hour. That's your hourly rate, $12 for one hour. Or $16 divided by four sandwiches comes out to $4 per sandwich. So when we actually divide our rates and get the cost per thing, or how much money per hour, or how far you go in one hour of driving, those are unit rates, okay? So some common unit rates that you've probably heard of or, or used before, how much gas your car uses, how many miles can it go on one gallon of gas, we often call that MPG. Right? If you listen to car commercials, you'll hear them say how many MPG. Um, if you're typing words or reading words, we often talk about how many words per minute. Right, And we could say, we could abbreviate it, we could say words per minute, or we could use the slash. How crowded a city or a state is, your population density, how many people per square mile, how crowded is your town. Speed that an engine turns, you've probably heard of RPM, rotations per minute, that's how fast your engine is spinning or turning. So unit rates are something pretty useful that you'll see quite often. Let's turn the page and look at this example. If we're asked to find a unit rate, okay, well, which way do we divide it? In this example, 125 fishermen on five fishing boats. Okay, you can always set them up two ways, but probably one way would make more sense. So for example here, I could say 125 fishermen in five boats, right? Everything has a label, and if I actually divide that, I get 25. And my label is right here. Fishermen per boat. That slash is already there for me. This is fishermen per boat boat. So if I have five, uh, 125 people on five boats, that's 25 people per boat. Okay. Could I flip that around and say five boats divided by 125 fishermen? I could. And if I type that into my calculator, I get this. 0.04 boats per fisherman. Eh, doesn't really make too much sense. So you're always going to want to think about, well, yeah, I want to know how many people per boat this is the unit rate that makes more sense. Okay, let me try one more. Miles and gallons. Well, I probably want to find how many miles per gallon. So I'm going to put miles on top divided by gallons. 240 divided by 11. You can type that into your calculator quick. Or when I did it, I got 21.8 miles per gallon or MPG. That makes sense. If I had it flipped around and I did gallons per mile and I put that in and divided it, you come up with 0, 4, 5. That's how much gas, gallons, you use to go one mile. Not as helpful, okay? We could find that, but that's not how, that's not useful. <laughs> that's not the way we would set that up. So this makes sense. You're always going to set it up and pick the unit rate that makes the most sense. Here's another one. Calories per slice or how many slices per calorie? Well, we want to know how many calories per slice. So put calories on top, divided by how many slices, then divide. Type that into your calculator. I get 350. And my label, again, is already right here. I just need to copy that over 
350 calories per slice. Okay? So I want you to pause it here and just do these next one, two, three, four, five, six. Just do these two rows and think about which way makes more sense. Would we do miles per gallon or gallons per mile? Would you do donuts per person or people per donut? Okay, think about which way makes more sense and write those down. If you're doing donuts per person, I'm good with that, okay? Pause until you do those six, just setting up the label, the unit rate that makes more sense. Okay, let's check these. So it's your job to be thinking about which way, which unit rate makes more sense. Miles per gallon. I would do 48 divided by 4 if I was finding this unit rate. Donuts per person, right? 18 divided by 9. That comes out to 2 donuts per person. Um, cost per book. What is the price per book? Dollars per hour. How much do you make? Miles per hour, how fast are you going? Right, so here MPH is what how we usually say that, but you could also say miles per hour this way. How many runs per inning, right? They average four runs per inning in the baseball game. All right, okay. So there are six down here that I want you to do as practice. We'll set up the first one together. Simply find the unit rate. Okay, Aaron earns $1,200 in four weeks. Well, do I want to find how much money per week or how many weeks per dollar? Probably money per week. So I'm going to set it up, money and weeks. I want everything labeled first. Um, how many books per week? Books per week. Okay, if you think about the labels first, that tells you which way to divide. So then you would just fill it in and actually divide. If these are tricky and you need a calculator, fine. Okay, so 18 books in three weeks. Actually divide them and label your answer. Pause and do these six. Do not hit play until these are done and ready to check the rest of this page. Okay, so I divided, but I need to label it dollars per week. This is books per week. 40 students per classroom. Miles per hour or MPH. How many giggles per day? And this would give me eight dollars per hour. Okay. That is video one.